It'll be a big help. So just go right down the list. It'll be fine. Hello, I'm Lauren Curry. Um, I'm from Matthews, and my sponsor is Senator Paul Newen. Hi, my name is Zia Ascalon. I'm from Raleigh. I'm sponsored by Senator Nickel. Hi, my name is Aiden Moran Bates. I'm from Cary, and I'm sponsored by Senator Kravik. Hi, my name is Sarah Ukondavidi, and I'm from Cary, and I'm sponsored by Senator Batch. Hi, my name is Reese. I'm from Franklin, and I'm sponsored by Senator Corbin. All right, thank you. You do so much better job than myself or Senator Brick and could do. So we appreciate you here today. All right, we're going to start this morning while we're still waiting on staff for a couple of the le uh, later bills. We're going to go ahead and uh, bring HB uh, uh, 327 to the floor. Uh, Representative Moffitt, you have the floor to explain the bill. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, there members of the committee. Is there an amendment? You want it to go first, or is there an amendment? I have one. You have an amendment yes. on this? Yes. Yes, there is an amendment. We'll show the amendment to the bill sponsor. <laughs> I think it's a very simple, friendly amendment, but we'll go ahead and get it out of the way first. Yeah, it is a friendly amendment. Uh, okay. I support the amendment. All right. Senator Britt, will you bring forth your amendment? I'll have uh, Bill Patterson with staff explain the amendment. It's technical. I think it just changes an effective date, I believe. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. As you'll recall, this bill was uh, reported favorably as a committee substitute back in June of last year. The only changes being made to the bill by the amendment are to make a clarifying change to the language uh, on lines 21 and 22. And the only other change is to change the effective date from January 1st of 2022 to January 1st of 2023. All right, thank you. Are there any questions, comments from the committee on the amendment? Seeing none, Senator Muhammad moves to accept the amendment. All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed likewise. Ayes have it. The, amendment is back, uh, the bill is back before us as amended. Uh, Representative Moffitt, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, members, the amendment pretty much explains the first part of the bill. Uh, the second part of the bill requ requires the codifier rules to publish the administrative code electronically on the OAH website versus doing printed copies. And the third part of the bill, which I believe has already cleared and been ratified in another bill, is updating the code of conduct for administrative law judges. And that's pretty much the bill. All right, thank you, uh, Representative Moffitt. Just to clarify things, does everybody have, a, all the members have a copy of the amendment? Okay. Just wanted to make sure it's Amendment H327-ATG-67, Version 1. All right, any questions from the committee uh, on the bill as amended? All right, seeing none, any comments from the audience? Seeing none, thank you. Senator uh, Fitch moves for a favorable report to HB327 as amended, rolled into a new PCS unfavorable to the original with a referral to rolls. All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed likewise. The ayes have it. Thank you, Thanks. Representative Moffitt. Okay. Are we ready? Okay. All right, we're going to uh, just move right down the list to HB 560, Public Safety Reform. This is a PCS. Without objection, we will bring the PCS before the committee. Seeing none, the PCS is before us. Senator Daniel is going to explain the bill. Uh, Mr. Chair, there is an amendment. I, I'm not sure if uh, Ms. Seitz has it. Just, just <laughs> hop, uh, hold fast just a second as uh, staff passes out the amendment uh, for the committee. Okay. 
just press this. Do all members have a copy of the amendment? Here's your copy of the amendment. <laughs> okay. I mean, that's topic. the upgrade. Thanks. Um, so, Mr. Chair, if you, we could have uh, Ms. Seitz explain the amendment. Okay, this is amendment H1008-ACE-64, verse version 7. Uh, Kristen, would you explain? Um, You're explaining. Thank you. Okay, excuse me. Susan Seitz, uh, Legislative Analysis. Um, a, most of this amendment is technical correction, so I'm going to gloss over those other than just pointing them out to you. Um, the first part of the amendment that uh, changes uh, Section 1B is just making an additional technical correction for the, the divorce, so to speak, of a Department of Adult Corrections happening in January. Um, the next part that is on page 3, lines 20 through 21, is also the same thing, a technical correction. Um, the parts on page 2 of the amendment, line 7, that changes uh, $5,000 to $10,000, the PCS before you change is $5,000 to $8,000. This would raise it to $10,000, which is the allowable expenses for crime victims' compensation for funeral and cremation. Uh, the new section 9.5 five would raise the total amount of compensation available to a crime victim's compensation from 30000 to 45000 And then the next portion is uh, something that's it's just figuring out the budget for the new Department of Adult Correction before January 1. Um, the rest of that is technical correction until you get to the last page of the amendment, that's section 19. Um, which is exempting wardens of adult correction facilities from some of the provisions of the State Employees to Human Resources Act and making them essentially exempt employees. Okay, thank you, Susan. All right, the committee has heard an explanation of the amendment. Are there any questions, comments on the amendment? I have a comment, Mr. Chair, if nobody Okay, else. Senator Daniel. So I think just, just generally, so these, these are as a JPS budget chair, these are thing, these are provisions that the JPS budget chairs put into our packet for the consideration in the budget, and it's this is just sort of getting them in another vehicle um, because there's some things that the department needs in order to, um, you know, one accomplish the separation and just some other policy provisions that the department asked for. Okay, thank you, Senator Daniel. Are there any questions from the committee on the amendment? Seeing none, we have the bill back before us as amended. Uh, all in fa favor of reviewing the bill as amended, say aye. aye. All opposed, likewise. Guys, have it. The bill is back before us as amended. He didn't adopt the amendment. All right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. This is an omnibus uh, Department of Public Safety re reform bill. It has a hodgepodge of small provisions. Um, you know, your summary pretty well spells them out. Um, I don't know that it's necessary for me to just go through all 15 of them. I would just say that uh, the bill had some, I guess what you could at least say, um, contested provisions or controversial provisions in it. The PCS removes that. I don't think there's anybody that's opposed to the, to the bill at this point, um, though they can speak for themselves. Um, the provisions that were removed were essentially enhanced punishments um, for um, Crimes committed by inmates, such as um, you know throwing feces or other some you know attacking uh, prison correctional officers, and then there was a provision re related to tort claims that prisoners might file. Um, those were just things that we felt like we should work on a little bit more. Um, so I think they'll probably be something that's that maybe is looked at in in the next long session. But for this bill, they have been removed. So I think these are. Uh, mostly benign type provisions, um, but um, if anybody has any questions, I'll be glad to Thank speak you, to them. The judiciary, the judiciary Committee uh, goes to a lot of uh, a means to make sure that everything we do is legal, and so I need a motion to accept that amendment that was explained to us just a moment. Come from Senator Newton. All in favor of the amendment say aye. The bill, thank you. The ayes have it. All in, likewise, no. As have it. All right, you've heard the explanation of the amended bill. Are there any questions from the committee? Seeing none. Uh, 
Are there, I think we have one speaker signed up for this bill in the audience. Would that person come to the mic and identify yourself? My name is Daniel Bose. I serve as the Director of Policy and Advocacy at the ACLU of North Carolina. Uh, you know, I'm getting into a pattern of uh, thanking the Senate Judiciary Committee um, and the same individual, Senator Daniel, Senator Britt. Um, you know, uh, you deliver in a pretty understated way, um, but those two uh, provisions that were stripped out, uh, it was a huge deal. And you don't usually see DPS uh, be that responsive. Obviously, they've been trying to push those same two provisions, at least the masturbation part, for the last five years. And so, uh, really appreciate uh, the Senate Judiciary Committee, uh, appreciate bill sponsors allowing the changes to happen, and appreciate DPS for uh, being responsible, uh, responsive at this juncture. Uh, so thank you again. Thank you, sir. There were a couple other people. Does anybody else from the audience wish to comment on the bill? All right. Seeing none, uh, Senator Newton uh, moves for a favorable report to the PCS to H560 as amended, rolled into a new PCS, unfavorable to the original with a referral to rules, with permission for staff to make technical corrections. All in favor, say aye. aye. All opposed, likewise. The ayes have it. So it is. So we will call our last uh, bill on our agenda today, House Bill 1008. Uh, Senator Muhammad is going to come in and, and explain the bill to us, and I think Senator Britt has an amendment. Senator Britt, uh, motion by the committee to bring the amendment before us. PCS. There is a PCS. I'll make that motion. Uh, we'll. Uh, this is a PCS. Without objections, we bring this to the committee. No objections. The PCS is before us. Uh, Senator Britt, would you like to explain the amendment? Uh, yes. Yeah, so. Well, first, House Bill 1008, we went through this yesterday. Uh, I think the uh, only point of issue in this PCS was the remote reporting, uh, which for the most part appears to already be happening despite uh, what seems to be an opinion by most members of the committee. They don't support it, but it's going on anyway. So we took that provision out. Uh, so we'll just let that go on as it is. Um, the amendment is uh, titled H1008-ACE-64. Uh, long title is, we may not have another Judiciary Committee meeting, so this is somewhat of an omnibus. Um, uh, the first provision of this uh, is a change to the, um, to the bill where we uh, 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 allow a tenant uh, the ability to be able to exit a lease whenever they've been a crime victim and it just modifies the law so it is more friendly to uh, both landlord and tenant. Uh, the second provision that is being amended here, uh, there was a uh, statute that allows for uh, sheriff's departments to contract for purchase of food and supplies for county detention facilities uh, locally. Uh, this would it, it, there were about 20 counties that this applied to before. This just makes it statewide where the sheriff's departments have that option. Uh, they still have to follow all state guidelines um, in seeking out low bid and uh, minority owned businesses as, uh, as the state requires. Uh, there is another provision in this bill uh, that relates to uh, suspension of driver's license. There was a law that was passed in 2015 uh, that essentially said that anyone convicted of three or more driving while license convict driving while license revoked or moving violation during a period of suspension uh, were lifetime permanent revoked had to seek a hearing however that law didn't change anything for folks who were convicted prior to 2015 what this does is it changes things for uh, somebody convicted prior to 2015 as well hypothetical of this would be uh, if you're convicted in 2020 of three driving while license revoked you're not permanently revoked you don't have to have a hearing but you could have someone who was convicted of three driving while license revokes back in 1975 that would have to have a hearing um, because of how the how the law was changed then so that, that just makes the law that was passed in 2015 apply for all those convictions the next provision in this amendment 
allows for someone who has a limited driving privilege. So if you can seek a limited driving privilege for certain circumstances, that can last up to 12 months. Uh, currently, once that driving privilege ends after those 12 months, uh, you have to have a hearing. Uh, during that period, your license continue to be revoked. Uh, sometimes these hearings in front of DMV are taking roughly six months to 12 months to be able to get that hearing. There's no process to extend that limited driving privilege. What this would do would allow someone to extend that limited driving privilege while that pending, uh, while that hearing is, uh, is uh, being scheduled with DMV. Uh, next provision of this uh, simply adds parity between uh, taxi cab drivers and transportation network companies as far as um, the, the crimes that a taxi cab driver would be um, liable for uh, being similar to those of trans transportation network company driver. And that would be the amendment. I commend the bill and the amendment to you. Thank you, Senator Britt. Okay, the amendment is for the committee. Are there any questions on the amendment? Seeing none. Senator Lee moves to Mr. amend Chair. the bill. Oh, excuse me, Senator Marcus. Thank you, Beck. You're on the back row. Um, for the bill sponsor, if you could just explain in the amendment, um, reference to taxi cab drivers makes me wonder about Lyft and the other um, r related services. Would they be covered by this? Do we need to consider covering them as well? Lyft, Uber, we et cetera? Senator Britt. Uh, yes, and we already have in prior legislation, uh, transportation network company would be included in that definition according in there. to staff. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Any other questions about the amendment? Seeing none, Senator Lee moves to amend the bill with amendment H1008-ACE-64 version 7. All in favor of the adoption of the amendment say aye. 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 All opposed likewise. The ayes have it. The bill is back before us as amended. Senator Mohammed, you have the floor. To Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, appreciate the committee yesterday. I know how many of you were so passionate about remote reporting, so don't be too disappointed. That provi those provisions have been removed from this new PCS before you. Um, it's pretty straightforward. It's got some new uh, verification method methods for sex offenders. It's also got a period to shorten community-based supervision when folks get jobs, GEDs, drug treatment and other things. Um, in addition, it's got uh, new provisions to help victims of crimes that are related to homicides to be able to terminate their lease uh, and rental agreements without penalty and a new qualified privilege uh, for uh, victims of crime. That's all. Thank you. Thank and you. Conference of DAs, everybody else is pretty supportive, no opposition. Thank you to Senator Britt, Senator Daniel, and the rest of you. Okay. Thank you, Senator Muhammad. Okay. The amended bill has just been explained. Are there any questions concerning uh, the bill? Any comments from the audience on, on this bill? S Senator Fitch, do you have a question? No, I move for a favorable report as amended, roll it into a Proposed committee substitute, give it a favorable report and refer it to rules. Very well done. Okay, you. Uh, we <laughs> let me say that Senator Fitch moves for a favorable report to the PCS to HB 1008 is amended, rolled into a new PCS unfavorable to the original bill with referral to rules with permission for staff to make technical corrections. All those in favor say aye. aye. All opposed likewise. The ayes have it. We are through. Any other business to come before this committee? I right, see none. We are adjourned.